Anchors Up sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing today? No complaints, no complaints, no complaints. It's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. There we go. I don't have one today, so we're just going to go ahead and get right. We're going to get right into it. It is game three for Ohio State. Know your enemy, the Marshall Thundering Herd. Always, always like that. The Thundering Herd. Unique. No, yeah. no one else has it. It's always unique. Kind of like the Buckeyes. No one else. Ha- no one else is the Buckeyes. Very unique. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, I like the I like the uh, adjective noun. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So in in our show notes, I always try to, especially like early on, I was like, all right, what, what can get us in the mood to get get all amped up about the Ohio State game? Talking about talking about the enemy that Ohio State's going to be facing. I do the color. I do the color scheme mm-hmm. for for the opponent team. So yeah, yeah. To Marshall, Marshall mm-hmm. is a is a green green color. Yeah, yeah. But their black isn't black oh it's not no it's a it's a really it's a really it's an i don't know what they uh um, is it like a hyper dark green yes it is it, it, it's like a hyper dark green um they, they cool. do they do call it they do call it black but it is nowhere near i'll, I'll put it here because i know jared I like, like some hex colors here. I do. But you can see it is well, it, it just, not, it's not even close. Because of the filters I have on the Discord. I, I, I know, but for you seeing it, <laughs> you look at the hex, you look at the hex there. It is not even close to black. It is it is <laughs> not. Uh black. Oh boy, I'm gonna be a nerd for a second. Black is um wait a minute. Yeah, black is all zeros, F is all whites, or do I have that switched around? I um, no, no, uh, it, all Fs are white. Yes. Okay. So all zeros in the hex equals black. And that's, that starts with 13. So that's, as you said, not really even all that close to black. But Kyle, literally like me and three other people actually care about this. So I could talk about this for the next 10 minutes. No one wants to listen to that, however. Sure. Let's get to know our enemy. Know your enemy. Marshall Co- Marshall, Marshall coming Mary. into this game. Yeah. Marshall coming into this game one and one. They uh, blew out their first opponent, the Stony Brook Sea Wolves. Did not know it, they on. were called the Sea Wolves, but there you go. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Pause. The Sea really? Wolves. You're going to pause on that. Yes. That's rad. Kyle, it's Marshall. We. we how much time you want to spend breaking down Marshall? I want to talk about the fact that both the th- Thundering Herd versus the Sea Wolves. That's a, that's an all name game right there. <laughs> I'm going to go on here, but uh, yeah, Marshall yes, then please. also played uh, played Virginia Tech uh, week two. Lost. Um, it was an interesting game. It was ten. It was ten seven Virginia Tech, but. Virginia Tech had a had a much better second half and beat Marshall 31 to 14 here. So interesting thing as I'm researching on Marshall here. Uh unknown about the quarterback. Unknown about the quarterback position. So I put in did some a lot of digging here because if you look at the stats, Jared here, uh quarterback Stone Earl has thrown the most, has the most yardage, has the most touchdowns. But honestly, they 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 really um, expected Cole Pennington to be the starter here. Yeah. But and yes, Stone that is Earl, his son, I believe. Chad Pennington's Stone son. Earl, you know, I should have looked that up. Uh, but I, I know the, uh, if he's not his son, he's his nephew. Like he is of Chad Pennington directly or indirectly. I I know for sure he is a Pennington of the Penningtons. I'm only like 80% sure that's his son, maybe his nephew or something. He is the son of former NFL go. and Marshall quarterback, Chad Pennington. There you go. Um, but no, Stone Earl got the nod for the first first two weeks there. But the coach, coach uh, Charles Huff of Marshall stated that he's he's listed 
all quarterbacks, all three quarterbacks as co-starters for this weekend. Cool. That'll be fun. <laughs> cool. I, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't. First off, I didn't know there were three. I was aware of the Stone Earl slash Pennington battle. I didn't know there was a third one. What's his name? Yep. Uh, Braylon Baxton. Braxton, excuse me. Braylon Braxton. Um, pretty accurate. How do co starters work? Only 11. Ask, well, how do co starters work? Spikes, y you, you were here for the Urban Meyer era. That dude had. That dude had more ores on the on the depth chart than Minnesota. That's a it's a keep rowing joke. No, 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 co-starters. You you would always have the ores on the depth chart. I understand. Only eleven are actually on the field. I get it, but it's just there are ores on the depth chart. That's it. Anyway, not important. Uh, yeah, Stone Earl yeah, so, not so, had a great start to the year. Um, no. 44% completion percentage. Um, does have three touchdowns. So, I guess that's a thing. But only, four, but, but only he's only 44%. Uh, is it? Hold on. Yeah. He is... I'm looking at the stats wrong here. Yeah, he's only 44% completion percentage. It's on the though. screen, Kyle. It is on the screen. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm not looking at the screen. I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> yeah, uh, Stone I, Earl, a, a, a lot originally of that, a lot of that is from... A lot of that is uh, yeah, from the Virginia Abilene Tech Christian game. and uh, University of North Texas. Uh, you have running back A.J. Turner... 14 runs, 222 yards. And Kyle, that is a 16, I'm going to round up, 16 yards per carry average. I think he's not going to do that against Ohio State this week. No. Bold prediction. Bold prediction. Yeah, it was like an 80-yard touchdown. Was it 69 yards? I thought it was 80. But if it was 69, that's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, um. 80 was the first game. Oh, he's had an 80. And that's how you get 16 yards per carry average right there. A 69 yard run and an 80 yard run. Okay. Look, once is a bold prediction, he's not going to do that against Ohio state this weekend, but still game breaker looks to be a game breaker so far. Uh, also carrying the ball, uh, former NC state running back, Jordan Houston, Kyle, a measly five yards average. Nothing compared to 16 yards per carry. He's only getting you about, you know, Jordan Houston only getting you about five. Come on, man. Come on, man. Um, Yeah. I'm not going to say long and then 69 consecutively. I'm not going to do it. Some point, some people might point out what Jared, you just did. No, I took a pause in there. Prove I didn't take a pause in there. This is recorded. You can't. Um, now, Kyle, I like their wide receivers. Christian for Pat, Christian Fitzpatrick, a guy you might recognize, especially mm -hmm. if you watch some Sparty games. Uh, he was yep. originally at Michigan State. Uh, he currently has eight receptions on the air for 170 yards, which is a 20 yard average and two touchdowns and wide receiver Elijah Metcalf. Also not bad. Uh, he originally committed to middle Tennessee. Uh, he has seven receptions for 72 yards uh, and also two touchdowns on the season. Yeah, I really like I really like Fitzpatrick too. Definitely their their deep threat there, but again, I not too worried, not too worried about about him just because I unless unless Marshall comes out with a such a weird offense that Ohio State's not going to be prepared for here uh to get Fitzpatrick out in space and all that, I'm not too worried about it, especially with with our defense, I mean, yeah, yeah. Look, look at the defense. Look at the defense, Jared. I mean, look at their quarterbacks too. I mean, 
the guy who won the battle is currently throwing 44 percent. Need mm. I say more? And if you're wondering, oh, well, is he some sort of great runner? Not especially. 18 carries, 86 yards. It's a 4.8 average. It's not it's not like bad. I'm not I'm not worried about it, though. Not worried about it. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, Kyle, you have a pair of really good linebackers who are leading the team in tackles. Um, their names are Landon Watson and Jaden Yates. Uh, overall leading tacklers, leading tackles for loss, uh, leading solo tacklers. These are your workhorse guys as far as, you know, the front seven are concerned. On top of that, you have <clears throat> pass rusher, leading pass rusher, Micah Green, who uh, originally committed to Virginia. Uh, he has, I think, already like three and a half sacks on the season, which ain't too shabby. So another guy to keep an eye out, uh, Mike Green. He uh, He's a quick first move. Yeah, 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 for sure. I think he only had like four or five all of last year. And he was at Marshall last year, if I'm remembering correctly. This isn't his, he originally committed to Virginia, but this is his second year at Marshall. Um, like I, said, I think he only had like three or four, four and a half ish last year. He already has three and a half this year. So maybe it's the level of competition or maybe he's like taken that next step in his game. Um, one of those two things is apparently what's happening or maybe he's just on a bit of a hot streak. I don't know. Mm hmm. I think one person from doing my research that uh, that I really like from from Marshall here, uh, he's a transfer a couple of years ago from Wake Forest, uh, safety uh, JJ Roberts. Mm -hmm. uh, last year he had he had seventy three tackles for the year and uh, and a pair of interceptions too. Uh, off to a decent start with uh, with eleven tackles uh, so far and two pass breakups. Uh, senior is senior this year, so definitely a guy to to keep an eye out for on Marshall's defense. I think he'll he'll be all over the field as he's he's probably their big um, playmaker on defense. Going to be all over the field. Now, Kyle, you have a you have a connection, sort of a sort of sort of connection to this thundering herd. Do you not? I do. Sort of. Sort of. I mean. You guys got one red light in your town. We got two, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Point is, is that two. not a lot of people come out of Columbus yeah, show Grove. Some respect, Jared. Not a Gosh. lot of people come out of Columbus Grove, Ohio. No. One of them no. is Kyle. Who's the uh, other? That's me. That's me. Point to the bulldog. Uh, yes, there's a. Yeah, for those that's curious, yeah, that's not a that's not a Georgia Bulldog. That's that is that is my my alma mater high school. They're they are the Bulldogs. They are they are also Scarlet and Gray. There you go. But you use yes. Bowling Green's fight song. We do, which is it's it's not a bad fight song. It's not. I couldn't hum it for you if I tried. I bet you could. And I'm not. And I, I yeah, I could, but I'm not going to. That's fair. <laughs> it probably wouldn't come through the noise gate anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to save this to the end, but you're you're already you're already going to mention it. But uh, yeah, kicker Reese Reese Verhoff, uh, junior, junior out of uh, good old Columbus Grove, Ohio. Uh, wish him nothing but the best. Hopefully, he gets a lot of. Um, no, uh, you can't end that sentence in a way that in in a way that's healthy. One kick, one kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I know I know there's a lot of a lot of people in my hometown who are going to be at that Ohio State game. Um, open for the best for for Reese, uh, but obviously they're, they're listen. Yeah, <laughs> hoping for the best when your hometown guy is the kicker for Marshall against Ohio is just hoping hey. he doesn't get hurt. So. He he's got a win over Notre Dame. Does he now? He yeah, yeah. He he was a kicker when when Marshall beat Notre Dame. Not remember that. 
I honestly don't. Is my is my is my brain failing? When did Marshall it, it beat Notre Dame? Jared. Or are you was it is, last year or was it two years ago? This this is a thing that happened. God. After we beat them in 22, says says Esquire. Okay. I just I forgot that. There you go, Jerry. I, I believe you. It's just my brain is sometimes, you know, donkey brains. I got the donkey brain sometimes, Kyle. It's okay. Um and he was a perfect two for two on field goals in that game. Uh, they were still healing after our game. Yeah, that's I'm sure that's what they 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 told themselves. Um, yeah, not not a you know, granted, 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 we're only two games into the season, but points per game, they're only averaging 14, which places them uh, 111th in the country. Um, if you go through the stats, yeah. I mean, just without necessarily labeling them offensively. 111th, 116th, 111th, 25th in yards per rush. As as we saw, one guy's kind of water buffaloing that one. Uh, and then uh, yards per pass, 132nd. Defensively, it looks a lot better. Now, points per game, 89th, not fantastic, but then... Yards per game, 54th, not terrible. Opponent yards per play, 34th, respectable. Yards per rush, 61st, average. Yards per pass, 43rd, not bad. Um, Discipline team, don't commit a lot of penalties. Um, Time of possession, they don't commit a lot of penalties. I'm trying to be nice. Trying to be nice. All right, Kyle. Do do we sufficiently know our enemy yet? Yeah, I, th- I think so. And with with that, I think we'll go ahead and take our first take our first ad break here. Um, be sure to head on over to the sloopcast.com where you can find all our links to all of our different websites, such as our YouTube page, our Discord server, Discord.thesloopcast, or even our um, Patreon page, uh, patreon.thesoupass.com, if you want to avoid these ad breaks uh, as little as $3 a month. Or you can even check out some of our merch store there. There are the podcast, Sloopcast merch store and the 7071 merch store as well, too. Uh, so with that being said, we'll go ahead and take a quick ad break and we'll be right back. And we're back. All right, Kyle. Are we ready to do our predictions? Is that what's next in in this show? I forget. We are ready to do our predictions here. So, all right, all right. So, the right. first first off, before we go into it, our guest picker. Our guest picker is none other than Z Spikes. Uh, Z Spikes, who is currently down in the chat. Hello, Mister Spikes. We will. We'll go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. So, Ohio State player to watch in this game, Jared. Ohio, Ohio State player to watch. I'm going Jack Sawyer. Um, this team is struggling. Uh, when I when I say this team, I mean Marshall is struggling to put together a passing game. Um, what better way to attack a struggling quarterback and a struggling? passing game than to totally disrupt the quarterback, whichever one of the three it is. And, you know, that's what else is there to be said about that? Like, go get the quarterback, whoever it is, isn't having a good time this weekend. I'll I'll say that whoever the quarterback is for Marshall, I don't think they're going to be having a good time. I think Jack Sawyer will be among the guys leading that charge. You know, I, I partially agree with you there. I I do like our our defensive line. I think I think Marshall's offensive line is probably their weak point. Uh, on the offense here, I know that the quarterback's struggling, but I think it's because the offensive line is not giving him giving him time. Yeah, any of them time at all too. And when you got guys like Sawyer, 
and Tui Mulau and Hamilton. But my guy I'm picking is Tyleek Williams. Yeah. Picking Tyleek Williams just to be that disruptive uh, defensive tackle right, right up the gut there to yeah. give zero room, not just for the quarterback, but for the running backs as well, too. So I got, I got, I got good old, good old number 91, Tyleek Williams. And who does Spikes have? I do not have his notes. Do you have them up? No, they're Jared. They're in the spreadsheet. Are they in the spreadsheet? I do not have it open. I apologize. I am not. I'm not prepared. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> Spikes is like, I submitted them. I swear I did. I, I swear. It is. All right. I swear. I got him open. I got him open. He has Sony Styles as his player yep. to watch for Ohio State. All picking defensive sides here. Yep, yep. I think we all understand all right. that the offense just needs to execute. Mm-hmm. If, if they have a clean execution game like they did in week two, then everything will take care of itself. If they're a little sloppy on execution, it'll look more like week one. Uh, but yep. no disrespect to the Thundering Herd uh, or their linebackers or their safety or to Mike Green. Um, but Ohio, if Ohio State's executing, they don't stand a chance. And a turnover. Oh, uh, agreed. Totally. I, t- uh, I want him to get a sack and a turnover. Yeah. All those things. All those things. All those things. By the way, Marshall is uh, currently minus one turnovers for the year, which puts, puts them at 104th in the country. All right. Uh, enemy player to watch. Uh, you want to go first this time, Kyle? Yeah, I'll go with the person I mentioned earlier, J.J. Uh, Roberts, the the leader on this defense here. And I think if Marshall is going to have any success, it starts with starts with the senior J.J. Roberts to uh, make his presence known. Uh, so that is my player to watch for Marshall. J.J. Roberts. All right. I have Christian Fitzpatrick, uh, the former Sparty wide receiver, big play guy. Um, If for no other reason than the catch he had in week two. Yeah. If if you're out there and you haven't seen it yet. Do it. Just Google Christian Fitzpatrick. It's going to show up. And catch. Christian Fitzpatrick catch. You'll find the video. Go do that. After this episode. Continue watching this. But after this episode ends, go do that. All right. I am pulling up the spreadsheet here. And Z Spikes has a J Green for his player to watch. Another another explosive AJ player Green. on the AJ Green. Ooh, 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 AJ Turner. There you go. You know, I saw AJ and I saw the color. So I just kind of put two and two together there. AJ Turner, 14 carries, 222 yards. You're a better man than me, Kyle. I would have blamed Spikes. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to uh, uh, tap, tap, tap. Oh, no, he actually put AJ Green in here. What am I saying? <laughs> AJ Green would be a real problem to handle. I, actually, I don't think so. Because I don't think the quarterbacks could get him the ball. Key matchups. Key matchup of for this game here. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and start again here. Uh, I'm just going to go the opposite of what Jared says. Ohio State wide receivers Give versus... Give away my answer. Jeez. I know, right? Ohio State wide receivers versus J.J. Roberts. I, I put Marshall DBs, but it's J.J. Roberts. That's fair. So... Can you imagine right, the th- shit think, talking I, I, between think, our corners and AJ Green? Yeah, but I think I think our um, but I, but I think I think the the shining light is going to be our defensive line. But that's not a key matchup, though. I think that one's a given. Um, <laughs> I and I and along those same lines, I agree with you, which is why I went with Ohio State's DBs versus Marshall's wide receivers. I think that's I think Marshall's probably strongest. At least starting units. I'm not going to lie to you and act like I know what the depth chart at Marshall looks like. But as far as like they're on the field starting, people are concerned. Their linebackers, their wide receivers are going to be their best units. Now, of course, with the wide receivers, like I was just joking about with AJ Green. 
the the challenge will be getting them the ball. Um, yeah. You know, Christian Fitzpatrick's a deep ball guy. How long will whoever the quarterback for Marshall ends up being? How how long can he actually hold the ball in a clean pocket to deliver a deep ball is an important question. You know, they're going to have to do some things to get Fitzpatrick some shorter passes, some some passes to get him in a bit of space, which is a lot easier said than done. Uh, who does Spikes have for the key matchup? Key matchup he has here. He's going with uh, a specific. He has Josh Fryer versus Mike Green. Yeah. I think I think that's a really good answer. Might be the best answer, actually. Might be the best answer, if I'm being honest. Next up, uh, Kyle. Ohio State is favored by 39 and a half points. Got to gotta hit, wow. hit the 40 mark to beat Marshall. Got gotta, to gotta beat him by 40 to win the, the Vegas game. And here's the thing, Kyle. I think they do it. I think the 40 isn't enough to scare me off in this particular game. Give me Ohio State minus 40. Yeah. Or 39 and a half. Excuse me. What, what's your score? Well, you are, the score? Are, are, we, are we doing that now? Well, I mean, typically, they kind of go hand in hand there. All right. Let's do the scores. I got 52 to nothing. All right, I also have Ohio State uh, winning as well and to cover the 39.5 point with a score of Ohio State 52, Mm -hmm. Marshall 3. You just want to see your kicker get a Mm -hmm. a field goal. He gets gets some points at, at Ohio Stadium, so. Uh, Spikes goes with 63 to six because he's putting tradition over all else. So good. Get on you, Spikes. Uh, that is a very nice prediction. All, all right. right. And that is, that is it there. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a, our second ad break here real quick. And we're going to go ahead and get into some, uh, some questions here as well as Austin's over and unders. So we'll go ahead and uh, take our second ad break and be right back. All right, we are back. Um, Kyle just pasted those in there. Um, I, they, although they didn't paste in a readable, friendly way, if I'm being honest. There we go. That's better. Gotta there the, you go. You gotta did do, it. Got to do the control. You, you did it right the second control time. Control shift job. V. Got to do the control shift V. So, uh, you're, you're good. Sp- uh, not spikes. Austin, you're good, Austin. No, no worries. All right. So Austin's over under. Austin, under, Austin. Under. Delivering right before absolutely necessary. <laughs> that That's just your ADHD, man. You, you don't have, you don't have to apologize for that. That's, that's just how we do sometimes, buddy. That's just how we do sometimes. Over, over unders for Marshall. So he has the first one as Trey Hundo. Trey Hundo of 87 and a half yards for the game. Just as a refresher. Uh, I'm just looking up real quick here. He is averaging. 65 and a half yards per game. He has 66 against Western Michigan and 65 against uh, Akron. This this column almost feels like a coin flip because I feel like either either Trey or Judkins will hit the over here. But then picking who is difficult. We went Trey, then Judkins. I think maybe we go back to Trey, so I'll go over. I think an interesting yep. question, and maybe take this for future uh, uh, advice, Austin, if you want to or not, um, like a Trey or Judkins. Hmm? Maybe. 
maybe not. Yeah, I, I agree. Like it's who's going to get who's going to get that um, that breakaway. And honestly, right now it it seems to be Judkins. Judkins is getting those long runs here, and I think I think Trey Hundo's do do for do for one. So and haven't been doing too well with these Austin over unders. So in my my mind, my mind, I thinking I should go under, but you know, we're taking the over. We're taking the over on this one here, so I will I will take the over for for Trey Hundo of eighty seven and a half yards. Esquire just said Trey plus Judkins over one fifty. I I would over. I would I would over. take the over on that over for sure. If if that were the over under we were doing, which of course it's not. Um, I went over. We both went over. All right. Next one's is J J Roberts tackles at six and a half. You know, my guy over here know, knows his players, and I talked talked a lot about him already. So, so he has eleven tackles for the for the year. Uh, exactly, pretty much right where he he should should be there. Um, so I'm I'm thinking if he's if he's going to be a difference maker it's it's got to be over so i'm 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 going to take over here he had 10 tackles he had 10 tackles against virginia tech so i think and maybe without, and with and, with, and without him like that score would have been a lot higher yeah i, I think with a safety specifically which uh, who robert says with a safety specifically they will tend to get more tackles against better teams you know, against a lesser team, the linebackers are going to be a little bit more active and get bet and get more tackles. But against, you know, an Ohio State esque team where your talent unmatched, that a little more more of the rushes, more of the tackles end up making it to the second, third level. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree. I'm gonna go over here as well. All right. Spikes also says over. Jeremiah Smith. Yeah. Point five, zero point five touchdowns for this game. Over. Okay. I got to go with the trend as well. I got to go over as well. Yeah. I, it's the if, the if you have said 1.5, I probably would have said under. Isn't that insane? Yeah, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. He's he's what fifth already in I think yardage in touchdowns as a true freshman at Ohio State just in two weeks. Between him and Williams at Alabama, the wider the freshman wide receiver class is proving insane already. Absolutely. Fitzpatrick catches at three and a half. You know, I had him as my player to watch. I had my Ed as the enemy player to watch. But again, he's like, a, he's a deep ball threat. And, you know, again, Marshall, if they're smart, will change up their game plan to make him not so much the deep ball threat. You know, because you're just, you're not going to get the opportunity to have your quarterback in a clean pocket all that often to throw a deep ball. Um, so with all the quarterback shuffling happening at Marshall, with the offensive line being the way it is at Marshall, with Ohio State's pass rush being what it is at Marshall, with Ohio State's defensive backs being who they are, I think Fitzpatrick gets shut down. I'm going under. The trend, the trend, the Vegas here tells me it should be over. He had four catches in the first game. Yeah. He had four catches in the second game. Yep. But you know what the difference is between those those games? Ohio State's defense. None of them is Ohio State here, yeah. so give me the under. <laughs> yeah. Next up, right. passes by Ohio State quarterbacks who aren't Will Howard, 8.5. Ooh. It's a good number. I'm not prepared to answer this question. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, just, oh, just, just see. look at week two. Just look at week two. Forget about, forget about week one. Just look at week two. How many? How many were? How many throws? How many pass attempts? You want to guess how many? No, tell me. I got it. Tell me. Just tell me. Seven. Seven. Ah, uh, it's almost like that. Seven wrong. for seven. Perfect. Hundred percent. It's almost like that's maybe where Austin got his answer or something. Um, but I'm going to go under. Oh, it's not. Austin says it's not where he got his answer. But I'm going <laughs> under. Pulled it out of my ass. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go over. All right. I think that's our first difference there. Mm. Surely a win for me then. All right, sacks by our defensive ends at 2.01. So two and a half sacks or, or more. So this is all defensive ends, not just starting defensive ends. He doesn't say specifically mm-hmm. yeah. Sawyer. I'm going to go over. To him go over. Well. Yeah, I mean. Give me the over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, you, if you're also getting giving me Curry and, and Jackson, then yeah, I'm going to go over on this. All right, and the last one we have here is total game turnovers at two and a half. I mean, we Jared talked about it like they they don't really turn the ball over that much. Uh, they're minus it, one on the differential is all I really said. That's that's the differential, which puts them at 104th in the country. I actually don't have on my board the total number of turnovers. Um and so I don't necessarily know that. We understand both teams. Uh, has Ohio State turned it over yet this year? I know that there have been fumbles, but I, I think the fumbles were recovered by Ohio State. Okay. Austin says nope. Yeah, they they, they have not. Um, and I that, know that and that's they, why you go get a fifth year starting quarterback. I do not think. Yeah. Well, here. here yeah, they, they've only turned the ball over once. I'm. I'm confirming Ohio State? real quick. I thought, no, 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 oh. no. Marshall. Marshall. I think Marshall has only turned the ball over once. Then that means they've forced no turnovers. If they've only turned, I because their their Correct. turnover differentials minus one. Yep. So they forced no turnovers and they've so only I'm committed go, one. I'm gonna go under. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna go, go under here. We, yeah, two two teams who have yet to commit a turnover. I'm gonna go under. Man, there's going to be like some strip sacks or something, though. I, I feel like we just walked into I feel like we just walked into a nest on that one. <laughs> yep, we're, we're going to be we're going to be wrong. We're going to be wrong. How many how many is Ohio State forcing per game? Do we have that number handy? Because that, that might Not change off. my mind. One, it's got to be more than one. We have more than. I feel like we have at least you have two defensive touchdowns on the year already, don't we? Yeah, I think we forced two here. a there game is, on average. We have we have one for, uh, fumble recovery and two interceptions. That's it. Okay. So only we only have one forced fumble. And that was a recovered. And uh, so we have Caden Curry forced the fumble. We have Leith, Lathan Ransom with the fumble recovery, which what ended up being that touchdown. Yeah. And Denzel Burke has an interception mm-hmm. and Gabe Powers has a touch as an interception that turned out for a touchdown as well. OK, yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, we're going to go under here. Yep. Yep, they're yep, exactly. They are they are averaging one and a half turnovers per game. So yep, we're agreeing to under. Remint. All right. Um any any other questions in, in chat here? I know we got a we got a few people live listening. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us tonight here. Uh any questions in the chat here? We can go through as we are wrapping up our wrapping up our Know Your Enemies uh show here. I think we're good, Kyle. Uh, Austin is typing, but while I'm setting up my YouTube TV, any hidden sports gem to add to your library? Uh, 
the thousands and thousands of BTN alternates. <laughs> it's more like dozens, but already added. Then you're good. You're good. Here, here's the thing you need to know about YouTube TV. The individual channels don't actually matter that much. You will just kind of not even care. Like YouTube TV will figure out that you want to watch college football. So when you go to turn it on Saturday, it'll just be like, hey, here's all the college football games. It, it really it really divorces you from ever knowing what channel you're on, which is. I don't I actually don't know how to judge that. <laughs> it's just the reality of what it is. I rarely go to the live guide. Yeah, same. If I here's the thing, though, if I'm actually turning on YouTube TV, because I, I spend most of my time like in YouTube or on apps or on Twitch, um, if I'm actually going to like live TV, it's like with a specific purpose. Like I don't ever browse around TV. If I'm going to TV, it's because I am wanting to if I'm going to YouTube TV, if I'm going to cable it's with a specific purpose. Um, you don't have to show me how to quad screen quad screen, though. Uh, it, it'll it'll show you it, it, it you only you, on a TV. You can customize your quad screen on a TV a little bit. It, it's not as good as they advertised, if I'm being honest, but it's still nice. Um, but no, you'll log in on Saturday and it'll just have a bunch of different quad screen quad screens to choose from. It's never the exact quad you want, though. Yeah, quad screen. <laughs> All right. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I. He doesn't. Not really? That's fair. And honestly, you don't I, have to. I don't. We just recorded on Sunday. It's Tuesday. What could have happened since the last two you gave us? Our state wide receivers uh, did really well in the NFL over the weekend. I think did you may very have. Well. I, think, I think maybe you talked about that. Did you do that on the. You may not have. No, I don't. I don't think I did because the games were still going on. Not really. Some. <laughs> Some. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, tonight's ending music we brought to you by a Columbus-based band called Slim Fit. I think I had an actual song lined up for today. Uh, Slim Fit, the name of the song is Dimitro Tsunami. Dimitro Tsunami. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is one word, Slim Fit. Slim Fit.